welcome to La Vida Las Vegas podcast. We're two physical therapists living the life in Las Vegas. I'm Dr. Erica. And I'm Dr. Joe. We created this podcast for two reasons. First, to connect the healthcare, wellness, and fitness communities in Las Vegas. And second, to highlight all the amazing people we've met along the way. Thank you for listening. And remember to take care of yourself. Today's guest is Melissa Saucedo, head coach at Orange Theory Fitness. She's been in the fitness industry for six years as a personal trainer and fitness coach at Orange Theory Fitness. She loves being a head coach because it allows her to develop other coaches and work in a team environment. Welcome to La Vida Las Vegas podcast, Melissa Saucedo. We are excited to have you on. Thanks so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, you already know my name. Um, As far as where I grew up, I grew up in Las Vegas. Uh, I was born in Los Angeles shortly after that moved here. And um, I really only know Las Vegas, and I actually really love living here. Um, but I'm super excited to be here today because I wanted to uh, share a little bit about my fitness journey and um, kind of show you guys the ropes with that. Awesome. Let's tell, let's go, let's dive right into it. Let's talk about your Perfect. fitness journey. So I started uh, working out and um, going to EOS actually about six seven, eight years ago, um, I was working at Chipotle <laughs> and I would go work out super early in the morning at like five in the morning before my shift. And, um, they opened an orange theory right by the Chipotle I was working at. And, um, one of the, um, head coach at the time, um, he was like, Hey, you know, I see you at the gym all the time and you should come see what we're all about at orange theory. I think he was trying to sign me up <laughs> and I ended up interviewing and I got the job that same day for front staff. Um, And I was like, wow, this is perfect opportunity because I just, you know, I love working out and um, I wanted to become a coach. And since then I started coaching, became a head coach and I love um, fitness and I love Orange Theory and it's just a really good um, community to work for. Do you still eat Chipotle? I do eat Chipotle. Yeah. Chipotle is delicious. At least once a week. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's good. So what made you decide instead of sticking with a regular workout program like EOS, what made you to make a transition into Orange Theory? Well, you know, I always, I, (laughs) my first class, I was like, oh, I'm going to be so good at it. Like I'm so fit. I can work out. I was super winded and I was, it caught me off guard for a little bit. I was like, wow, I'm actually not in the shape that I thought I was like half the people in there were going way faster than me. Um, and I think it was just a wake up call. I was like, I'm not as good a shape physically as I think I am. I think I look like I'm in shape, but I didn't feel like I was in shape. And that's kind of what really drew me to Orange Theory is people there like really go hard and it's a very hard workout. So Orange Theory is a little bit different. Uh, So if somebody, for our listeners that have not been to Orange Theory, how would you explain how it works? It's a full body workout. Um, You have a coach with you at all times um, and it's a group atmosphere. So there's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of energy in the class and it's a little bit competitive with yourself because you wear a heart rate monitor while you work out. Um, so it's great for the coach because they want to make sure they're not overworking you or underworking you. And as well for you, because you want to push, you want to see how many calories you're getting. It's good to know what heart rate zones you're in. You know, are you reaching your afterburns? All that is displayed right in front of you. There's tablets on the treadmills. It's just a really awesome way to track progress, um, while you're working out. And it's, like I said, it's full body and there's, you know, cardio, we have rowers and we also have lots of strength training like TRX and weights and just basic things that you can do a lot of different workouts with. So how would the program be then if someone were to walk in the door and they haven't experienced it, what would they be doing that day or an example? (laughs) Well, um, typically we have everybody come in early. So I would usually go through with the rowing technique um, because I think that's new for a lot of people. Um, It's definitely something that most people haven't done before. Um, So we go through rowing and then we go through the different options of your fitness level. So um, are you a power walker? Are you a jogger? Are you a runner? You know, what, you know, what would you like to try that day uh, depending on your fitness level? And we kind of work with everybody there. Do you have any injuries, any restrictions? Um, And it's all based off of, you know, what you can do and what your goals are. So it's very customizable to each of their own. Um, With that heart rate monitor, you are able to um, push yourself. So I may be working at a different speed or a different weight than the person next to me, but we're both getting that same feeling and that same rush and that same workout in a way, which is really exciting. It's super customizable. That's awesome. So I just wanted to ask you, what is that afterburn? If someone doesn't know exactly what that means, what is, what does that mean? Yeah. So 
Um, the reason it's called orange theory, um, the theory is if you spend more than 12 minutes in the orange and or in the red zone, which is 84% or more of your heart rate, um, then you're going to get that afterburn. You're going to achieve EPOC um, and you're going to be able to burn excess amount of calories up to the next 24, 36 hours. Um, so that's about 20% of your calories. A lot of the times people at the gym don't really push themselves to that level. Um, they may start to get a little bit uncomfortable and they're like, okay, I got to back off. But really we want you to push beyond that. Right. And that's how you're going to get that afterburn is staying in that uncomfortable zone, maybe a minute here, a minute there. Um, and overall 12 minutes or more during your workout. I love it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I do think that a lot of people too, that they don't push themselves enough when they're in the gym or they don't realize uh, what a what a workout like that is. So like you said, when the first time you try it and then you do something where your heart rate is high for a while, then it, sometimes it feels a lot different than if you're working out with your buddies at a more standard gym doing like three sets of 10 or something. Oh yeah. I mean, think about all that break time that you have, right? And when you're in that class setting, it's like, go, go, go. There's really not a lot of breaks except when I'm demoing the exercises for everybody. Um, but yeah, it's just a great way for you to see like, am I actually working as hard as I, as I think? Um, and if not, what can I do to get there? Yeah, I love it because it's a, it gives you real time. You can see exactly what's going on on the screen and you don't really get to, I don't think I've ever been in an experience doing that except when I'm getting test. If, if you've gotten tested for uh, like exercise testing, like a, <laughs> in, in, in undergrad, we did, uh, like some wing, wing gate testing and like some of the VO2 max stuff. Like that's the only, only way I would see it. But otherwise like you're going so hard on those tests that you have no idea where you are in your heart rate. So I think it's really cool to be able to see that in real time. Uh, and something else too, when you're going to different zones, can you explain those different colors and what the, what that means in terms of like gray yeah, th those types of zones. Absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like I'm having a test right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> so gray is going to be your resting heart rate. Once it goes into blue, it's more of like your warm up. So you're just starting to walk. You're you know you know you're kind of just getting on the treadmill, maybe pressing that green start button and going a bit. That green zone is going to be aerobic zone. So that's a good zone to be in, especially when you're on the weight floor. You definitely want to you know get your heart rate up, but you don't want to be gasping for air necessarily if you're doing weights. Um, and then the orange and red zone are obviously like your afterburn zones. The red is like your max heart rate. So we don't want to spend too much time in that red zone. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So what are splat points? <laughs> Great question. So um, splat points are going to be determined by how many minutes you're in the orange and in the red zone. So when you're working out, obviously you're not going to be like, oh, you know, I'm in the orange and you're not going to be able to calculate it. So that splat point calculates it for you so that you don't have to think about it. And you just look up on your treadmill or on your rower, and you could literally see, oh, I have five and I need 12. So what do I got to do in order to get the remainder splat points? Because I want to achieve my afterburn, you know, it's Thanksgiving or whatever, mm -hmm. depending on your goals, obviously. Now, when you're in classes and you're comparing splat points, do you ever he hear people talking about the competition of you know, their friends <laughs> talking about it? What, what is that like Absolutely. as a coach? Absolutely. Um, it's super exciting. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up because Orange Theory is global, right? So the best thing about Orange Theory is if you were to take a class in Canada today and I took one here, we are doing the same workout. Um, and I think that's super cool because that way you can stay connected with your friends that do Orange Theory mm -hmm. and you can send each other the results and talk about the workout. Uh -huh. um, there's like this, <laughs> there's this Orange Theory meme on Instagram and they have so many followers, basically people that are Orange Theory like freaks follow it mm -hmm. and everybody can relate to the posts of the day because we all did that same workout and it just keeps, it just keeps the Orange Theory community like super fun and yeah people send each other the results so they're posted on instagram and they'll be like oh my god that was such a hard workout and mm -hmm. you know people can relate and that's what keeps them kind of connected i think versus people that just do their own workout at a box gym or wherever any other place mm -hmm. yeah it's funny because i uh one of my friends in california we were talking about our, the workout and I sent her those, those results. And it's, it's funny, you know, you have those, those conversations and you don't understand it until you actually do it. Right. Until, yeah, until exactly. you're, until you actually experience it. So I think that's just a, a great thing about the group fitness, but you, you get to, you have, you have to be coached by somebody. And I think that's one of the most valuable things you can have as a, uh, in fitness in general. I think, uh, it's something that's missing in quite a lot of routines, like in general, right. As I don't know if you grew up playing sports, you know, I was actually super lazy. In high yeah. School. Oh, yeah. So big. So that's zero what, sports. Yeah. So is, is that what what triggered that uh, that 
fitness journey for you? Um, you know what? I was kind of just like a couch potato and I was always kind of like in shape, like in PE and stuff like that. Like I remember like if I actually tried, right, if I actually <laughs> put the work in, like I could do it. Um, and I remember like getting like, shoot, maybe like middle school, elementary, like getting like the fastest mile or whatever, like, <laughs> but I never even tried. I was like, that's weird. Like, oh, maybe I should try, you know? And then, um, I just decided that I would join the gym because I wanted to look a certain way. And that was really the only reason that I joined the gym to start off with. And now mm-hmm. it's my perspective is obviously totally different. That's awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people start that first, like they go for aesthetics and they're like, oh, like I want to look this certain way. And then somebody like really beats them bad in a workout and you're like, Hmm, there's something else to this. I want to be good too at working out or fitness. Yeah. But yeah, and, and as I mentioned, as a, being coached in general, I'm sure you see a lot of different people from all walks of life. Can you tell us kind of like the the varying population that you see coming into, into oh, your yeah, gym? absolutely. I mean, the best thing about Orange Theory is it's so customizable. You can really be in great shape and you can always work harder, right? And you can always push yourself harder. Um, but you could also come in and have never worked out in your life and, you know, start off, you know, with your first class, maybe being your first workout ever. And we have that, um, a lot actually. Um, and it's very almost intimidating. So our goal is always to remind them, Hey, this is, you know, your heart rate monitor. This, you know, this person's working just as hard as you are at the level they are at. And I think that's a little bit comforting to people. Um, And we've also had people who are, you know, um, celebrities um, that worked at Orange Jerry before. I think one of my clients, um, Jason Giambi, (laughs) he's a baseball player. Yeah. Um, And, you know, he works out there and people that are in amazing shape also work out there. So it's very cool. And I think, too, that you touched on the barrier to entry to some people is that they a lot of people assume that you already have to be fit to go to the gym. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not fit enough for that. It's like, well, that's why you go. Right. Like you, you go and you can start, you know, anywhere you need to go and then you can progress from there. You don't have to be a marathon runner to go join the gym. Yeah. Absolutely. And as a coach, uh, do you have any specific story or success story that you, that really like stands out to you that you can share with us? Oh my gosh. I have so many. It would really be actually really hard um, <laughs> for me to to pick one. Um, but I'll just pick our recent member of the month okay. <laughs> and start off there. But, um, yeah, I actually have a client who recently had his, um, his fat levels super high. Um, he was you know, in quarantine and was feeling depressed and, you know, just like a lot of us were probably at the time and, um, gained a ton of weight and saw his doctor and his doctor was like, you're a young guy and this is really bad. And like, we need to get you know, your cholesterol and everything in order. Um, didn't work out before. And then his, you know, his girlfriend worked out at Orange Theory. And she's like, hey, like, you know, the pandemic's over, you know, come on down and, and you know, work out with me. And now he lost 20 pounds. And it's, it, you know, th- think about it. We only opened in June, right? So it's not really that much time for him to already see such great results. Lost 20 pounds. His he comes in with a smile every day and he's no longer that shy guy that, you know, came in and just kind of looked down on the floor. Like his, his personality is even different. You know, the way he looks is different. He actually cares about his appearance. He comes in and he looks, he's got a haircut. Like he actually cares about the way he looks. And I think that's super exciting to, to go from just, you know, being down and now looking at yourself and feeling proud of what you look like. And also, right. He went to go see his doctor and his doctor was like, wow, I can't believe, like, what are you doing? Like, that's insane. He's like, I rarely see situations like this. He really turned his life around. Um, and, he, you know, he thanked us. But obviously, there was a lot of eating and nutrition involved as well. But um, I think sometimes one positive thing can lead to so many other positive things, right? So coming in, started coming in a couple times a week. And then before you knew it, he's coming in all the time and eating better and, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. And I think some of those things feed into other things. So it's like when you first start working out, you, you might not change your diet and all these other things at once. And, and once again, I think people, another barrier to it is like, oh, I don't know how to re- eat right. There's all these things I don't know. It's really just more important just to go. Like just show up to the gym, walk in the door. And then especially if you're being coached, just let the coach tell you what to do. That's one of our favorite things about going to all these gyms that we go to is that <laughs> someone tells us what to do. I don't have to think about it. And it's, 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 that's the best way. But then over time, as people start feeling better, then they sometimes do start tapering their diet and like changing things about it they start getting more interested in nutrition just because like they're already being successful and success kind of breeds success in that way 
Have you noticed that with some of the people that you've worked with? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, a lot of people go in thinking like, oh, I don't want to be here. Uh, you know, I hate, you know, I hate working out. I hate, <laughs> I hate this place. Mm. <laughs> but then before you know it, they like look forward to going and I'm mm. like, oh, hey girl. And, you know, it's just a fun, it's just a fun place to be in. And, you know, you, you start seeing a lot of the same people. So now you have friends that you can talk to and, um, you know, even if you're complaining, you're still going, right? And then before they know it, they're like not missing workouts and they're excited to come in and, you know, their attitude's different. And now they're like asking me about nutrition and things like that. And absolutely, I see it every day, like every single day. And that's why I love working there. It's just such a positive place to work for. And you mentioned that too. I think the energy in there is just so unique, right? It's You have the music. Music's also like awesome. Like it, you, like they, you guys just have like a, something that just like ebbs and flows with the the time you have to go. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a proper way that you guys are like analyzing that, but it's just like the energy of when you have to go up and you're doing like, you're something do you're doing like an orange or like a red zone and you're like pumping and you hear that music and it's just like, and there's stuff on the wall that you're reading. It's just like, it's, I don't know. I, I guess I can explain it like more like euphoric in some senses, yes, right? You can get absolutely. to that and get to that point and you have like your coach whispering and you're not really whispering in your ear, but kind of, they are in your ear, you right? Push through. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone's uncom- uncomfortable at that same time, right? If we're going through that, that interval and we're about to go onto that hill, everybody's going into that hill together and that kind of brings everybody together. And then also, you know, the coach is there trying to trying to make sure that you're motivated and I got my playlist on and making sure I got a good song on something that's going to make you work a little harder. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And one of the best things about that too is then when you're fitter, you get to go spend your, spend your fitness doing other things. So as far as in Vegas, what are other things that you would spend your fitness on or things that you do that are outside the gym? Well, outside the gym, you know, I wish I did more, honestly. I don't feel like I am, I don't do a lot. Like I don't really go hiking or anything like that. Um, but I do just usually work out at like other box gyms. I do like trying other, other studios or other workouts sometimes just to see what it's all about. I, I like to change up my routine. Um, so I do different types of workouts all the time. What are some of your, uh, other favorite places that you would go in Vegas, uh, like such as restaurants or just locations people might not know about? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I love eating sushi. Oh, very so, nice. So, um, is that something? Is that the, oh yeah, the a lot of people like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, love it. Um, so I like going to. I think it's called Sapporo's. Mm, okay. Um, and they have like that revolving sushi. Me and my boyfriend Ryan go there like constantly. You get to choose kind of which, uh, yeah. which one, and it's like already made. It's a yeah, gem, yeah. honestly, because you don't have to wait for your sushi. You just literally look at it, and you're like, that looks bomb. And then you grab it, and then you put it on your plate, and it's easy. So is it on a little treadmill? It's like a little it's like um, a boat. <laughs> right? It's like a boat, right? A sushi, like a kind of, it's or is a, it a conveyor it's like belt? A, it's a conveyor belt. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. I can oh, find okay. the name. <laughs> there, so I, I grew up with this place that was called Sushi Boat, and mm. it was actually on water, and it was a boat. And oh. like... And you just pick all you want? Mm-hmm. Is that one all you can eat? Uh, I mean, technically, no, because you do have to pay per plate. Oh, so okay, it's okay. like a plate of like, it has like three sushi rolls or four or whatever, depending okay. on. Um, and then they just like count your plates at the end, essentially. So it's kind of like little appetizers. You don't have to order like full on roll. Mm. So I really like that. I really like that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, food, we're big, of course. big fans of food and sushi. Any other here. places that you like to go to or... Restaurants that you like? No, I don't go out. I'm, I'm I'm so I'm such a boring person. Like I just work, I work out, and then I go eat sushi sometimes. That's literally my life. <laughs> well, do you do a lot of meal prep then? I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the good thing about my schedule is I can pretty much work around around it a lot. Mm-hmm. I have my set classes, but then I also have you know other responsibilities I have to do for the studio. So I'm able to you know sometimes go home in between or come back to work or work from home things like that. So. Um, I usually just like meal prep my carbs and I meal prep my vegetables and then my protein. And then I just kind of put it into the containers depending on, I, you know, I'll, I'll make different foods with it. Just having that ready already. What's your go-to uh, like recipes or things that you like to make with your food? Well, I'm actually not a good cook. Um, so I'm pretty, <laughs> I try like stick with like the grill <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it's easy. You just toss uh, like your proteins on there or whatever. Mm-hmm. But typically like what I make is just, you know, grilled chicken. And then I love making sweet potato fries. So I mm-hmm. usually do sweet potato fries and then I just do like a different vegetable. 
um, and I'll make like um, sandwiches with it or I'll make, um, you know, rice bowls or whatever. And I just change it up on the week depending on what I bought at the store. But it's really simple things. Like mm-hmm. I don't get retired of eating what I eat. I just keep it the same pretty much like mm-hmm. every other week. Switch it up a little bit with just some of the like seasonings some maybe. Some of the sauces maybe. Okay. <laughs> So if, if you normally make most your own food, what would you say your favorite cheat meal is? My favorite cheat meal, definitely, probably sushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say sushi for sure. Or um, I love burgers and I love Mexican food as well. But um, favorite cheat dessert would be cinnamon rolls, hands down. Cinnamon sure. rolls, okay. Yeah. Like homemade ones or like go, you go out to uh, go get it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, that's definitely a good pick. So what's something that you've learned, but you wish you knew it sooner? In regards to fitness, I would say, um, yeah, just start with one thing at a time. I think when I first started working out, I was like, I'm going to do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I, I threw so much at myself that it was a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing I would say is find a, find a trainer. Like, honestly, when you, when you get in there and you work out, you know, you don't know what you're doing and maybe you don't have people that you can look up to. I know I didn't, I didn't have anyone in my circle, anyone work out. Like I, I was almost kind of like a loner for a while because I did work out and I wanted to be in that lifestyle and no one I knew was in it. My family was not or friends or anything. Um, and so if you were like find a trainer or something that could really help you and like motivate you and push you through maybe just for a month or two. And then after that, you kind of know the ropes of the gym and, and you feel confident. Cause I remember going in there and thinking like, God, these people look so much better than me. And like, you know, I immediately got like self-conscious a little bit. Um, and then I didn't want to go in. So I think just, you know, finding a plan, finding someone who can help you and guide you, I think is super important. Um, rather than just going in there and, you know, kind of like blind in a way. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think that's really good advice. And even if it costs more money to do that and get a trainer, I think that that's the better route to go because you're less likely to get hurt. Like you, you can accelerate like your growth and learning faster when you have someone else that's like guiding you and helping you with it. I think that's really solid advice. And I think yeah. results typically come with that too. Yeah. Like, you know, in general, getting coached by things, it's you just tend to get better and you'll see it. You see it, like you mentioned, in people's personalities change. You see people looking good, feeling good. Like if, if, if people feel good, when they work out and after the fact, it ch- it changes so much in your life. I don't know if you like, for example, if, if I don't work out for a couple of days, you do not want to be around me at all. Like Joe, Joe can tell you that too, right? <laughs> you have to move around and I, I, and then you don't realize like if, if that's what people are doing all the time, I wonder like, is this, is this a, a vicious cycle of you're not feeling good? But I think that it just comes with not moving, moving enough in general. Yeah, I can tell definitely when I'm, you know, not on track, like not working out well, and maybe I'm eating like crap that week. Maybe I didn't meal prep or I didn't, you know, set myself up for success. I feel like that week I just feel different and I immediately, I'm like, no, 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 I can't do this. And I go back to like going hard again. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's just not for me. And I think so many people haven't had the opportunity to live that other life and they don't know what it's like to feel good. They're used to feeling that way and Mm -hmm. it's normal to them. So they don't know the difference. And how good you can actually feel. I think that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's, I think that's very undervalued and you just don't realize, some people just don't realize like Mm -hmm. there's, there's a way to feel good. Like you don't have to feel bad all the time and just like your overall mind and your body. Like it's like you, it's okay. Like you you should feel good. Like I think that's, that's super important in our life to feel good. I think some things that people attribute to saying that they're old, I, I don't, I think it's that they haven't been moving or exercising, working out. And that's why their energy levels are so old. It's not like your, your body has like this ticker on it. And it's like, Oh, you just turned 30. So you're, you know, you should all of a sudden feel old now or, you know, whatever age. But I, I've just noticed uh, that as long as you keep working out, then your energy level will stay higher. I don't know if you had any of your clients mention similar things. No. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, like I said, one positive thing just leads to the next, right? So they're coming in and they're working out and all of a sudden they, you know, they, they're different. You know, their energy level is different. They're, um, they're, they're happier for sure. I, I, I see that all the time. People coming in, they're shy, they're afraid, they're scared. Um, and, you know, they're, they're negative at first a lot of the times. And then all of a sudden it's like this light, you know, just kind of shines on them and they're happy and excited about life, really. That's awesome. So you mentioned that you have some other duties as uh, with Orange Theory. You coordinate a lot of events. What kind of events do you typically do in, you know, in the community? 
Uh, we just recently did a 5K, um, and we typically like to work with like charities um, and find ways we can give back. We really want to get out into the community other than just other than just the fitness industry, but other things that correlate to that. So um, we just did a 5K recently, it was last Saturday, I believe, and we were working with a charity called Win Win Entertainment, um, and they help kids in the hospital. So um, we kind of just put this actually really kind of like last minute. I think we did like, we did it in like two or three weeks. We ordered like some things online and we made some wristbands and, you know, we um, came up with that charity that we were willing to work with and wanting to work with and um, ended up having like over a hundred participants um, at our studio. And a lot of things we did, we got donated. Like we got like this huge balloon arch donated to us and, you know, drinks and food. And so many people wanted to help as well. Uh, it was a super cheap for us to do this 5k. Um, and a lot of people haven't been out of their houses. Uh, a lot of people haven't been working out besides orange theory, or they haven't even done so many people didn't even have never even done a 5k. Um, and you know, this is their first, their first time with, with us. And that's super exciting that we were able to, you know, push them to do something different and also help, you know, um, a charity with it. Yeah. That was a great event. And there's lots of dogs walking out there and, guy in a turkey outfit and juggling that was pretty awesome <laughs> it, was a, it was a great event so if, if you guys do it again check it out make sure you it's tur- yeah, you guys are probably going to do it around thanksgiving time is that what your kind of thought process is well actually that was our first one that we put together um we're thinking about doing it more often we just don't know don't know when but we try to do different things all the time and um you know we try to just spread fitness um as much as we can so We'll see what's next. I'm excited to see what the new year brings. Heck yeah. We love it. So what's something you commonly see in your gym or practice that you wish more people knew? Definitely just um, form, I think. Um, As funny as that sounds, right? Because if people knew form, I probably wouldn't have a job. (laughs) But um, definitely form. I think so many people are getting injured on their day-to-day lives, you know, picking up boxes or at work. Um, they're, They're not... They don't know how to engage muscles properly. Um, I'm sure you guys know this too, right, with the line of work that you guys do. But, you know, um, people don't know how to get, you know, pick up boxes and, and, and get up. And they're constantly injuring themselves. Um, and so for me, it's like having to teach someone how to walk sometimes. It takes so long to get someone to finally have, you know, that hinge or, the, you know, the squat or dead, you know, deadlift. Just basic things that you're going to do on a day-to-day life. And people don't realize that. Um, so I wish people had better understanding and knowledge of how to like fire up your muscles prior to doing just day-to-day activities. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of times we've noticed when people get hurt, it's normally something that they're doing outside of when they're in the gym, but they attribute it to being active as, well, I'm active. So therefore I was, that's why I'm hurt. Well, it could be that you've been lifting incorrectly for a long period of time. And then you just happen to do that one time at the gym or picking up your shoe. And then that's why you're hurt now. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's, it's a, it's a challenge, right? As a as a coach and, and as someone who teaches something, uh, it just takes time and practice and patience, unfortunately. But I think with persistence and uh, helping people just become more educated, and I think that's one thing is it's tough because you don't realize sometimes what you are doing on a daily basis, like you mentioned, right? It's it's hard to like, oh yeah, I'm tired. I'm picking up this last box. It's like my hundredth time I picked this box up, and you get fatigued. And that's where, where it just, it just kind of it breaks the camel on the, what, the camel back camel's back. What yeah. is it? What is that one? <laughs> the final straw that breaks the yeah. camel's back. I'm really good at idioms. Yes. There you yeah. go. As you can tell. Yeah. And you know what those are called, but but yeah. knowing them is yeah. a different story. Exactly. <laughs> so, what's something else you've been working on? Either it's professionally, personally, physically, just in general. What is it? Something you're trying to improve, or that you're excited about? Um, I think this year has been really hard for me, so I'm definitely trying to just improve my mood. I think and improve. Um, my relationship with people, um, absolutely. And my relationship with myself, I think this year has been kind of negative for me. So I'm excited to kind of just have a new outlook and and work on myself a lot. I think that's something that I've kind of neglected for a while. I work on a lot of people all the time. So oftentimes I'm working a lot or, you know, I always get in the gym, but am I actually focused on what am I, like what I'm doing, you know, and, um, putting, a lot of like effort into myself and what I want to do and figuring out, you know, what's the next step for me. So, uh, I just want to focus on me really this year. That's love it. And I think 
unfortunately, 2020 has given us a lot of perspective in general. But I think that's something I re- really resonate with as well, with working on yourself, right? Being able to invest in yourself is one thing and, and making yourself a better person makes you a better coach, right? Makes you a, a better human, makes you a better sister, daughter, in general, just all the roles that you live in in life. So I 100% agree with that. And I, I love that. That's, that's really awesome to hear. So how can people find you? Um, uh, Instagram, <laughs> like wherever your, uh, your location is, you can explain that. Yeah, sure. Uh, my Instagram is Mel underscore sauce. Um, so it's the uh, first few letters of my name and then the last few letters of my last name. Um, but yeah, Instagram really is all I get on. I, I don't really do any of the other social medias. And of course, Orange Theory Fitness. <laughs> and where is that located? That one's on Eastern and St. Rose. All right. But we have a lot of locations all over. Um, so if you haven't tried it, I definitely think that you should. It's a great experience. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show and you spending your time with us today. Thank you so much for having us. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, Melissa. We'd like to thank you for listening to La Vida Las Vegas podcast. We hope you enjoyed the time with our guests as much as we did. It would help us out so much if you could share, subscribe, or review our podcast or any combination of the three. Thanks again, and remember to take care of yourself.